Healthcare Informatics and Documentation. This week, for the video and in class, we will be spending time talking about healthcare informatics, which may or may not be a new topic for you, um, and also how healthcare informatics relates to informatics for nursing practice, and specifically what competencies nurses should have in order to, to have better patient outcomes, um, the information that we use and being literate about that, using it in the best possible way for evidence-based practice, and how do we manage information in our nursing practice using electronic medical records, documentation, and data and information. Uh, these are the list of the chapters that have been assigned for this week's readings in Sewell and Thede. Please take time to read through these chapters as these will give you the foundation for our nursing informatics discussion this week. Let's begin by talking a little bit about the background of informatics. So in whenever we talk about informatics, people often believe that this is a relatively new phenomenon, that inform informatics has only been around in the since the dawn of technology at maybe the last 40 or 50 years. And that just isn't the case. In fact, historically, nurses have always been concerned with what we do with information, how we collect it on our patients, where we put the information so that other people can use that information, and how do we retrieve it later and find patterns in our patients and our patient populations to be able to make informed decisions. Um, and this is actually the foundation of our nursing knowledge. In fact, it is the precursor to the nursing process and how we use and disseminate information, as well as how we develop our plans of care for our patients. So it isn't simply just computers, although computers now uh, are a big part of informatics, just so for conceptual reasons, just expand your understanding about what that is. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slide. Um, so the reason why we have informatics is um, we need it to inform what we do and how we use uh, our information to make decisions for our patients and our patient populations. And we often use the electronic health record to manage that information now. It allows us to stay interconnected with other disciplines so that we can have seamless exchange of information. We use it to personalize care for our, con for our patients as consumers so that they're informed about the decisions that they make, and to improve public health uh, through surveillance of things like the Ebola outbreak that's happening right now in Africa. How we collect that data can be varied based on the way the technology that's available and how we use that information as well as with quality measurements and research. So how do we improve what we do? And when we do things, how do we base it on evidence? So let's, we talked a little bit about what healthcare informatics is and how is this different than, how, uh, how is this different with than nursing informatics? So nursing informatics is actually a subspecialty of health informatics. And you can see in this Venn diagram that there's a body of knowledge that you're beginning to learn about that is the body of nursing science. And nursing science is actually an amalgam of many different sciences like biology, chemistry, pharmacology, psychology, uh, mathematics, uh, many things that go into what we conceive as a science of nursing, our body of knowledge. And where it all comes together is how we use information science, and this would be the people that are more, um, more educated in the areas of how information is retrieved and disseminated, um, like health records specialists, and computer science people, which are the, the ones that are specialists in the area of how computers function in the language and how computers process information and manage data. So uh, the, uh, this is specifically in nursing informatics is how nurses manage that information. And it's a point of care data, usually from our patients, uh, 
usually at the bedside, and it's how we use information and kind of interface with the worlds of in information and computers to have better patient outcomes. So why do we have to know more about nursing informatics? Well, there's a lot of forces out there that give us um, rationale why we need to do what we're doing with, with informatics and why we as nurses need to own more of what we do with informatics. So some of the national forces that are behind uh, this movement for informatics is the Institute of Medicine, which have expressly written core competencies for all healthcare professionals, including nurses, that we just need to be better at knowing what to do with information and how to use the computers that help that information work with other disciplines for better patient outcomes. Then we have the uh, uh, PITAC, which is the Presidential Information Technology Advisory Committee, that's a mouthful, and uh, this committee has put forth for safety and quality reasons um, uh, for um, ideas that we need to have a standardized terminology between all of our disciplines, and that means um, that information and computers should be talking the language of healthcare so that if I'm talking to a physician or an anesthesiologist or a pharmacist that we're all using the same language. And as far as from nursing standpoint, we have the National Center for Nursing Research and this agency, which is an arm of the National Institute of Health, have created program goals for nurses and the competencies that nurses should have. And these core competencies have been adopted by the American, uh, the American Nurses Association, the National Leagues for Nursing, and the American Association of Colleges uh, of Nursing. These core competencies have uh, since been adopted by many institutions of higher education, including UW-Eau Claire, um, mostly because of the 2008 TIGER Initiative, which is a technology information guiding education reform initiative that came out as a result of these, these recommendations from ANA, NLN, and AACN. There's some other forces involved outside of um, uh, clinicians and federal governments. Uh, there's some outside agencies, called, uh, in particularly the Agency for Health, Health Care Research and Quality, the AHRQ, which we talked about last week in class, and the, um, their initiative to um, improve patient quality and safety, one of the biggest initiatives that they've been part of that need to interface with informatics is, uh, that you may be familiar with is the barcoding for med administration. And although in the nursing homes where you're working now, that may not be the norm, it probably will be in within the next few years. And hospitals have already adopted this um, as a multi-part uh, compliance with the federal government. Uh, and um, long-term care facilities will be closely behind. Then some of the other initiatives have been uh, cost. And LeapFrog Group has been part of that, that initiative. And if you're not familiar with LeapFrog, uh, this is a great organization to get familiar with, especially in any if you're doing any research in healthcare. Um, and what LeapFrog is, is they create these scorecards for health agencies, and their whole goal is to increase transparency in healthcare agencies and improve quality and safety. And they do this by collecting data on these healthcare agencies and reporting their scores on these publicly available scorecards. So People are incentivized uh, to, to be part of these uh, initiatives to have better data gathering and information dissemination based on um, patient outcomes. So some of the benefits of, of informatics is in the past when everything was on paper, things were kind of buried. Um, to find a patient record individually would be maybe something you could manage, but finding trends in the patient care may be more difficult to see. 
Um, and if you were looking for trends within a community, those might be nearly impossible to connect the dots because it would take a lot of manual pieces of paper and somebody sitting down with a piece of um, grid paper and drawing some lines between things and trying to find the patterns. Um, with the advent of computer and information sciences working with nursing and other healthcare informatics, uh, we're able to find those patterns a little easier. It also improves the communication between the providers. So now the information isn't simply on a written piece of document. This information can flow electronically between agencies and between providers uh, to be able to get that information out quicker and to find patterns a little sooner. Um, easy quick storage and retrieval of records. Again, we talked a little bit about that with the buried data. Um, and a savings of time and money. So it's more efficient um, to, you know, obviously if you're looking for patient data or community data, it's a lot easier to retrieve that information. And it's a savings of money as well because if things are coded appropriately, um, then we're able to identify those areas where charges may not have been documented correctly and um, the agency would lose money because of poor coding. Some other benefits for nursing would be that it enhances our practice and allows us as a science to develop. Using evidence-based practice as a guiding force, we can use this, uh, this information to improve our patients and improve our practice. So it improves our quality of documentation. Uh, thank goodness it helps us decrease our time we spend with our documenting. A lot of things um, are just easy clicks of buttons and we're able to connect dots. Uh, electronic health records are very intuitive now. Uh, they're getting better every year where they can anticipate that if we give something like uh, Tylenol, which has a daily dose limit, uh, EHRs can warn us and have a pop-up that'll say um, that patients already had um, 650 milligrams uh, in the last 24 hours. Are you sure you want to continue? And so there's all these little flags that help us um, protect our patient as well. And it, obviously it improves quality control because we can go back in time. We can do something retrospective and find where problems have existed. And we can do research based on that information that's already been put in and we can look forward to how we can improve that for building an evidence-based foundation.